In this video, we're going to explore how we can use data structures, and data structures are absolutely phenomenal. But now we're going to put in this tool drop down here where we can control the data. As you can see here, it will keep on adjusting it, and you can see the chart moves along with that nicely depending on the values we grab. And there's a lot of data in here. So basically, we have if you count here three different years and then three different categories, so in total, on mine data that we can represent in a chart. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers question, which is how to create two drop down options with data structures in chart.js. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to change the chart type with the drop down list in chart.js. And in here, the Prashi care asked the following Question. A special thank you to Prashi for asking this question. And this is what she asked. Thanks a lot. Could you please show, uh, please help to show how to create two or more different drop down functions in one canvas? All right. So here, the question here is slightly different. But what I want to do here is to show you one of the most powerful features with two drop downs. And if you're looking for something more specific, I personally would recommend you to uh, ask that specific question what you're looking for because there's basically a lot of things we can do the drop down but what are you looking for that is probably the best thing however I'm going to show you one thing that is very very useful and very powerful to do so let's start and work on that which is the data structures and data structures are one of the most uh, advanced items in charges so first of all we're going to go to charges 3com getting started and for some reason I get this error here but you can ignore it I know this Mozilla doesn't have this. So if I copy this link here or this uh, chunk of code, I'm going to copy all of this. And if you want to understand what this code does, please check this specific video here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste this in here. And then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to cut out my title. This is basically only necessary for me, not for you. I just change the title here, save this and refresh. All right. So what we want to do here eventually is having two drop down options here and we're going to work with data structures where we can create basically more more data where the chart looks like multiple instead of one or at least we have multiple data and we can show this uh, consistently based on our selection so what we're going to do now is if we scroll down here we're going to work on our data structure to do this, we want to pinpoint this specific item here, which is our data here. And what we're going to do here, we're going to just say a data. And then we're going to put in here brackets, because this is still an array. Make sure we have a comma here. And then in here, we're going to work with values. So what I'm going to do here is basically going to create seven data values based on all of these here. And then we're going to break it down in, in a more granular level. All right, so what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to say ID and this ID would in identify the label eventually here and this will be related to the X value so once we have this and we could put, we could sorry we could say also here X but we can do here ID or maybe day doesn't matter anything what you want whatever you would do here later on will be very important to remember because we will use this specific value as well later on so then we say here comma let me say here the financials basically we have here is another one is an object we're going to financials and the financials can be broken down again so that's basically what we're doing here now is we're just breaking it down in multiple mm -hmm. items so uh, let's make sure we have this proper indentation we can put it like this and then in here we can select for example the year and we can say here for example 2020 and then in there we break it down again and here we might have I can see that I just realized that this is incorrectly spelled financials. That's correctly. All right. And then here at 2020, we might uh, divide the financials into cost, sales, and profits. So we have like three different items as well. So I'm going to say a cost. And let's give this a number. I'm just going to give it some random numbers, which will make it very clear that's a difference. We have sales. Let's make sales uh, 90, comma. And then we have profit. And the profit will be... Uh, 100 all right so just different numbers here there's i will not look at the logic of it and the reason why i want to make sure later on it's easy to distinguish so then we have here another one and we have another one because i want to have eventually two more 
for 2021 and 2022. And then in here, I'm going to put in here, let's say 100, and this one will be 44, and here 33, 66, and I'll just give this 666 and triple three. So we have these numbers here. So we have that. Then the next one is, of course, we need to duplicate this because this is Monday. What you want to do is here eventually for seven items. So these labels can be removed. There's basically obsolete, but we need to duplicate this more. Make sure you have a comma here, and then we're going to copy this. I'm going to paste this now. So we'll paste that. All right, that's number two, number three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have here seven items. I'm going to remove the last comma here. This will be Sunday. This will be Saturday. This will be Friday. This will be Thursday and Wednesday and Tuesday. All right, so we have this. And then I want to have some different numbers here as well. Let's make it number three. This will be number six. This will be number nine. Now we have here, uh, let's see. Let's do here some other numbers just to make it as unique as possible. Uh, let's give this one, two, three. Make sure we have these. All right. And then here. Uh, all right. I'm just going to just put in some random numbers here. It will be one, three, two, and three. All right. I guess we can just do like this for the remaining here. Four, four, uh, and this. And then we have here 12. All right. 12, 13, 14. And this here will be one, two, and three. We make sure here we have something else. All right. This one is the, uh, make sure you have all those. All right, so you can just put in some numbers here. And there we are. So this will be one, two, three, or two, it's all right. All right, so we have this here. I'll make sure that this one is still slightly different so you can see later on the differences. So if we save this right now and refresh, you will see we get nothing. And the reason why right now, it doesn't understand where to get the values. The labels has been disappeared and this has not been assigned yet. And as well for the Y value, we don't know which value we need to grab. We need to grab basically the cost, the sales or the profits. One of those we want to grab. So what we're going to do now is basically in here, we're going to do the parsing. So for the parsing, all we need to do here in the options, we're going to say parsing. Because now, if you want to understand what is parsing, parsing in essence means make something readable for. So you convert it into a readable uh, item. So basically, we're going to make this object array here readable for chart.js. And more specifically, here in the chart.js, the, in the scale, in the y scale, and the x scale. So we're going to say the x axis key, and then this key here equals the ID. Why the ID here? Well, basically because of this one here. Remember, this this now comes back. So the next one will of course be the same. If you will do here, and then we say here the Y axis. Make sure you have a comma here as well. And what do we want to grab here? So now will be a question. What do we want to grab? Well, if you look here, if you want to get in the Y axis certain value, for example, we want the cost. We need to go to financials. And for financials, we go to, to 2020 or whatever we want, and then we grab the cost. So we can select here the year, so we have the financials, the year, and then the item here, one of these three and one of these three here. So we have a double selection. So in essence here, what we really have is basically we have nine different charts in one, and that's quite powerful here with Chart.js without changing much in your chart structure. So what we're going to do here is just get the financials, then we say dot, and then we're going to grab here. Let's say we're going to grab 2020, which is the current year. And next, what we want to do here is, for example, the cost. So once I have this, and if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now we grab all the values here. And we can see here this is weekly sales number 10. All right. So 2020, this should be number 10. That is correct. So the next one would be on Tuesday would be number 3. And if you check here, you can see this shows up as well. So if I make this, let's give this a really crazy number of 
uh, like that, 1,999. Refresh, and you can see here now, it jumps to 1,999. And of course, here the others are hardly too noticeable because the value is too high. But if I make this, let's say 33, refresh. There you are, this is 33, and the others are still visual, visual or visible for us. So what we're going to do here, let's put this back on 10. There we are. So now what I want to do here is basically create a drop down. And these two drop down will be directly connected so we can see or select a specific year, but also select cost or find uh, the uh, profits or the sales. So one or the other, or basically we can choose the year and we can choose which specific category of the financials we want to show. So what I'm going to do here is basically the following. So I'm going to click here a, uh, well, this could be just a simple drop down. So we're going to say here select. And then in here, we're going to make options. No option. And then here, we're going to say the value of this. So we're going to say here value. And let's select here. What will be this? Well, we can say here the year. So we're going to say here select. And then we're going to say here uh, on change. So the moment there is a change, we want to say here, well, we're going to do here the year or uh, let's say change financials. I will call it financials. And the reason why it's financials, we're still going to work with one function. And here, I will not use any value in here. I just leave that because we are going to use two different uh, select options here. That's why. So in here, we can say the first one will be the year. So we can say 2020, and this will be 2020. I'm going to duplicate this two more times. All right. Put this in here and put that in here. So we have all of these. All right. And then I'm going to do this again, again. But now we say here the same function, except here a different value. So what is the value here? It will be based on these here. So as you can see here, first we have the selection of the year. And then we have the selection of the category. So we can say here, this will be cost. And then we have here sales. And then we have here the profit. So now we have this here. And this here eventually will create a new. If I save this now and refresh, you can see here, we have the selection here. Of course, it doesn't work yet because we need to uh, get this function working or trigger the function. Right now it's triggered, but it doesn't exist at all. So I'm going to copy this function name, which is the change financials in both ways. In here, I'm going to create a new function just down here. And then we can say here the following. I'm going to create this function. And then what we're going to do. So we are going to do to or what we're going to do then is to combine them together with the value. So what is very important here? We have this function now. We won't use any parameters because we're not able to do that now because of the structure we have here. But what we can do is the following. We need to get here the ID. And this ID will be, let's say here will be year, very straightforward. And the same one here, ID equals, I will say this will be financial. Uh, financial without the S. So I'll just, so to avoid any complications because we have here financials and I think here as well with the S. So this one will be without the S. Or maybe we can say financial category, whatever you want to give it, name doesn't matter. So all I want here is the following. Say so here, uh, constant. And then we're going to say here the year equals, and then I'm going to grab the ID name. So I can say document dot get element by ID, and then here this is a string value. We get the ID name of year, which is the select option. So you can say here dot value to extract only the specific value, not the entire uh, uh, ID tag, or basically the, not the entire tag, but because we only want to extract the value that we selected, not the entire select options. So the same here, financial without the S, remember that. Put in here the value. So if I do here console log now, you will see here we just get only the year and the value. Let's grab this. Save that. Refresh. And now if I open up our developer tab here and select something here, you can see here we get both. It gets the original, which we reinstated. And then you also get the sales, what we have selected. So if I change here again, it will loop through both of them because our function is only one single function, which is fine. That's what we want. So now what we want to do here is basically adjust this here. What we really need to do here is basically adjust this one and this 
uh, namespace here. So how do we do this? Well, basically we're going to say here my chart because what we want to do now is we want to go in the chart. It's my chart, then the config. So I'm going to grab here config. So we say my chart dot config dot, and then we say here in the config we go to the options dot. We go here now to parsing dot, and then here we're going to grab this one, which is the y key axis. All right. So once we have this here, let me say here, equal to what exactly? To this, but then in a new way. So I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to put it in here. But what I want to do here, because I'm going to use here what we call template literals. Template literals is just an easier way to concatenate, which is from ES6. So here, back tick, back tick. If you want to know where is the back tick, it's on your keyboard below the escape button. So basically here is an easier way to concatenate. So we say financials dot. And then what we want to do here, this is the year, but the year is a value. Remember here this constant. So I'm going to say here, dollar sign, parentheses, put in the year. And, then, and that will understand that this is a variable. And then we say here again dot. And then we do exactly the same for the financials. Oh, sorry, not the financials, but the financial without the S. Dollar sign. And then we have here these uh, curly braces. Once we did that here, semicolon at the end here, and then we say my chart dot update. Once we update, semicolon here, save this, and now we can refresh. And once we refresh here, let's change this to year 2020. So the moment we have 2020, you can see something is happening. And you can see now our value has changed as well. Now the weekly sales equals 44, and Sunday would be the sale of one. Or, or the cost of one. It should be officially the cost because of this here. So let's look here. Sunday cost is that one? If we go on Sunday and let's see the year 2022, cost equals one. All right, so that's correct. So if we do profits, we should see now 666. So let's do that one profit. It changes, and now you can see a 666 nicely. And now we can keep on changing here, and it does all kind of items that we want. Beautiful. So this is basically a way how you can do more advanced things because the data structures here are really powerful. Now we combine here a drop down. We only have one function. I know you requested two functions, but I personally would recommend here instead of asking any ideas, just let me know what you want because I can pinpoint it more easier and show you exactly what to do if you have a certain request. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I have another video if you enjoyed this one. There's something else more that I would highly recommend here, which is a slightly different uh, setup, but then in a dynamic chart with data structures with checkboxes. So basically, we have a different structure, different setup. Here, we have checkboxes that will show or hide values. And by default, it will show the data structure all three values. And this is as well a different way of showing data again.